Um, I always have the support from my city um, to this day. No matter, I, I can go to the hood and, you know, the love is always there and it's genuine. So without, you know, without, I guess, that hood love and that, that inner city love, I wouldn't be where I am today, for sure. That's where I'm from. A lot of people may not be able to make it to an NBA game or see me play live. You know, they don't see me on TV or the internet. So uh, it's basketball. I love the environment. I love people standing up on the crowd, talking, you know, on the baseline. You know, that's the type of things I love. And that's, that's organic for me. So anytime I get a chance to do that, I always will. I just love playing basketball. I just love the game. And I mean, why not, man? I played in Rucker Park all day growing up in high school. That's a stumper grab. You're really that nice and you really want to build your name. Go out there and play against some of these guys because a lot of those guys really play overseas or really are nice. They just never had the opportunity to be seen on a platform to go to the NBA or play in the G League. So I'm playing against some of my best talents playing in the G League or playing in the Goodman League and traveling the world and playing against different people. So I think that's the great atmosphere. And, and why not? Get back to the city and let them see you play that environment because a lot of people will never get the opportunity to come to come into a Washington, to come into a Washington Wizards arena and watch us play. So I think that's the big aspect. I think the reason why a lot of the summer, uh, the summertime leagues are real big, whether it be in D.C. or New York or in Miami or especially out here in L.A., because that's what a lot of those guys grew up on. And a lot of those athletes there were more recognizable to them than some guys that played in the league. You know what I'm saying? So they were people that lived in their areas and that were popping in their areas. So it only made sense for them to go back and play in those kind of games. Nothing. I always wanted to be able to step on, step in Rucker Park and play because it was like that shit. Is, it meant more than the, the Madison Square Garden in the streets. You know what I mean? Like nobody, not that nobody cares if you make it to the NBA. That's the highest level. So like that means a lot. But like to be at Rucker, like Dykeman came along later. You know what I mean? But Rucker was the the best place you could ever play at. Well, first of all, if they're playing against other superstar athletes, it does benefit them. That's a that's a part of your game, even if you're like, but you're not really going to play that way in the NBA necessarily. But a fighter hits a speed bag. You're never going to throw a punch like this. But it's an exercise, hand-eye coordination, whatever. So that's a certain kind of exercise. But also for the love of the game. Because when athletes reach a certain level, everything is extremely structured. You know, it's not like playing when you're a kid. I mean, I don't know if it's important but that's just something I always done and I feel like it's just normal like I can come I go to any city and I try to find an open gym whether it be a LA fitness or a local park that's just who I am and and that's who I'm always gonna be there's two things for that right like you always want to keep your street cred end of the day you know basketball didn't start as a business for us it started as a passion love joy we grew up in the streets playing playing you know we wanted to beat the best we wanted to be that guy um and then now you're trying to give back to your community because a lot of these local kids that can't afford NBA tickets, they're coming to the Drew League game, right? So I see a lot of guys coming in for that as well. You know, it, it's a form of give back, you know, but I think first and foremost, it's you grew up in the streets. You know, you always want to keep that, you know, street cred at the end of the day when it comes to sports, right? <laughs> Kobe Bryant, a month after winning his third NBA title and playing in front of the world, will come up here and play. Yeah, it's a lot of old heads and you know OGs from St. Louis that you know I wanted to be like you know when I was younger. Uh, yeah, we got something like this in St. Louis that I used to go to every weekend with my pops and uh, sitting in the front row and watch. Um, people are playing these um, type of leagues for two reasons. One, um, for the cause of the league. Danny was well known. Um, he had pro talent. He, you know, he, he would have been a pro basketball player. Um, the people had a lot of love for Danny. So um, it's a great event, a great charitable event. So people want to play in that event. Um, Urban, it's just important for the culture. Uh, they get to watch this on TV, NBA game. Everybody can not make those games come from the city. Come from. So I always feel like you should always come back and play in those games if you can. And uh, just put on the show for the people. I said they support us a lot, so it's always good for the kids to see, feel, you, touch you, and be able to uh, interact with you. So I always try to do those things. I mean, it started on the streets, and at the 
at the pure level basketball started on the streets and some of the best games are still played on the streets. Uh, so I, I think that's one of the things that's so cool about basketball as a sport is the way it's also intertwined into pop culture. So I, I think you see that through the through those sort of leagues and through the, the games up at the parks and, and the like. People want to be a part of that culture. They want to they want to be connected to it. They they want that pulse to, to go through them rather than you know just because they're a great player or so what that they're removed from that. They want to make sure that they always stay a part of it. Like to be at Rucker, like Dykeman came along later, you know what I mean? But Rucker was the, the best place you could ever play at. I remember like when I was a kid being it, like trying to go up there. I remember I think AI came up there and Stephon Marbury came up there and we couldn't go. So it was like you had to climb in trees or climb on gates or like climb on like whatever truck that might have been parked just so that you could get a glimpse of what was going on because it was the place to be. Like Rucker was like a basketball club. Their hood or the neighborhood or the community um, being one of the ones that may get um, out just giving everybody else hope. You know, that, you know, I can do it. I came from the same background as you. I came from the same, you know, poverty neighborhood as you. You know, I made it out. You know, it's possible you can make it out. So it's a little bit of both to keep that street cred, you know, to, to, to come and be in tune with the neighborhood, but to also give back, give hope, um, do different events and activities in the neighborhood, you know, just to look out for the community. And places like, like if you see someone goes up to the Rucker or they go play in the Drew League, you can have fun in a way that's not so structured and get back to the love of the game. I'm sure, I'm not a baller, but I'm sure that's what the appeal is to a, to a lot of people. And also, the leagues at the top have become so corporate that I'm sure some players just want to get in touch with, you know, some kind of realness about the game and their love of the game and the way they feel, not just, obviously they're having fun playing, but also the way they see themselves and feel about themselves. I'm not just this kind of piece in this corporate machine, but I like to play basketball.